Hello everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to hand paint some yarn to get some tonal variations and we're going to be using Wilton's teal food coloring using cereal dilutions. So what's going to happen is that we are going to make a stock of one really concentrated color and then dilute the stock solution and dilute each of the dilutions so we get progressively lighter colors. And this is known as creating serial dilutions. And it's something that is very commonly used in labs um, to help you get um, really small concentrations um, of some compound when it's because it's much easier to accurately weigh a much larger amount. Today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly is sponsored by Carly Lanners. Um, we are going to dye 200 grams of yarn, um, one 100 gram skein of stroll fingering and 100 gram skein of the worsted weight wool of the Andes uh, yarn. Um, and those are currently pre-soaking while I mix the dyes. Right now I have five cups of water. Four of the cups of water each have a half cup of water. But this first cup, which I've labeled 100%, has a full cup of water. In the end, once all the dyes are mixed, we'll end up with half a cup of water in these cups and one cup in the smallest one. So I'm going to start off by taking one teaspoon of dye, approximately. Oh, I guess I did that slightly off camera. And carefully dissolving this in this first cup. I say carefully because the volume is super high. So I can't stir too vigorously. All right, this is pretty good. So now we have one tablespoon of dye in one cup of water. So when we pour half of this out into our half cup measuring cup, we are now going to have a half of a teaspoon and a half cup of water. So the concentration remains unchanged. Oh, I spilled a little bit. Um, so now that we've added this to our next cup, we now have half of a teaspoon of Wilton's Violet food coloring in one cup of water versus one in one, and so we're 50% of what we were before. And I am going to, one of the ways I'm going to mix this is by pouring back and forth because this solves two issues. Oh. And of course I spilled. So the spilling will affect these concentrations a bit um, <laughs> because we're losing some dye, but the theory is still present. Um, the other reason why I'm mixing by pouring is so that way the concentration of what remains in our measuring cup matches the concentration that is in the cup cup. So that way I can use the same cup. All right, so here is a half cup. And I'm now just going to refer to this as the 50%. I'm a half cup of our 50%. So I believe that there's now basically a quarter teaspoon of the food coloring in each of these containers. And I'm going to pour it into here. Eek. Mix it up. These colors are still pretty dark, actually. Um, but one teaspoon of dye is an awful lot of dye. We should see a difference on the yarn. 
This should also give us a nice starting point um, for when we're when someone wants to dye a pastel. You can know that, hey, you're gonna want even less than say an eighth <laughs> of a teaspoon. So it's funny, I was sort of hoping that I would be able to take a picture of these and show like, woohoo, look at the pretty colored water and how pale it is. But they all look really dark still. So I know that we'll see a difference on the yarn and you can kind of see it a bit when I pour. Um, I almost started off with half as much food coloring, but I wanted the end to be pretty dark. So I don't think we're going to be getting much of a pastel here. But we now have our, our dilutions. Um, and so the concentration of the color down here is 6.25% of what we started with. So we should get a really, really nice gradient. I pre-soaked the yarns for this video overnight um, in just some enough water to cover them with three tablespoons of white vinegar. The acid is necessary to allow the colors to bind to the yarn. And now I'm just going to put it through um, my salad spinner to help remove as much of the excess water as I can so then I can add as much dye as possible. So you could add these dyes to squeeze bottles or pour it, but I decided to bring back my favorite uh, foam brushes, at least at the beginning, until I mark out where I want each of the colors to go. So I really enjoy using foam brushes to apply color to yarn. Um, and this will help us get a sense of all of our different colors. Okay, so I did the darkest and now the palest. So see the difference? Alrighty, so this is actually going to be a pretty uh, deep gradient. Wilton's teal does break a tiny amount, um, but I'm not. Uh, so we might see some like cool variation within the different colors. Okay, is this about halfway? This is our 25%. Yeah, so this, if you're starting with one a teaspoon of vinegar, that's not enough to give you a massive gradient all the way to a pastel. Um, I should have diluted it further, guys. And then here. Yeah, because just because each time the dye is half as concentrated as the last time um, doesn't mean that the colors will necessarily read that. But you can see that we've definitely, <coughs> sorry, you can see the gradient slowly um, coming down. This is why if you had done um, something that wasn't as uh, ex extreme, like, oops, if you had done less than half uh, of a dilution each time, um, you might barely have seen the color change. But we do have a nice progression as we go down. And I will eventually start um, pouring. I just wanted to show the colors. Actually, let's start at the lightest end. I'm going to start pouring and really painting over at the lightest edge because um, 
then I don't need to worry about like washing my hands and kind of like contaminating the colors as we go through. But I am going to start pouring a bit. Do, do, do. The teal color is so pretty. And the thing with hand painting versus dip dyeing is that you can see over here because the colors strike to this is the stroll yarn, which is 25% um, superwash merino. Um, sorry, it is 75% superwash merino, 25% um, nylon. And so in that yarn, the color just strikes so fast um, that we'll get some variation within the color itself. Do, do, do. All right. Do, do, do. Hmm. Maybe I need to go a little further. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I want to make sure that we've got good penetration of each of the colors. Um, but you can, when you're doing dilutions, you can always, um, you can always dilute more, but it's just doing the serial dilution method helps you maintain some of the colors that you, um, doing the serial dilutions allows you to keep some of the more concentrated colors as well. And so you can, if you see, the, the difference between the palest end and this, the next spot is pretty subtle, um, which says a lot because this, there's twice as much food coloring in this section than there was the previous. Um, but not everyone always has access to a good pot for dip dyeing, and so hand painting is just another uh, technique to get some tonal yarn. And especially if you're dealing with a color that breaks. Um, so some, one of the next things I want to do is try this with, do this with Wilton's Violet. Um, because we'll see, you'll see some breaking in each of the sections, but then not, um, you'll see some breaking in each of the sections, but you'll have pink throughout the whole thing um, versus you know, in, in this colorway um, where, you know, we aren't seeing that breaking because it's a lot more subtle um, and it takes a long time. Okay. Do, do, do. Now we're starting to see the color get much deeper. Yeah, the brushes, the foam brushes aren't super great for large sections, larger sections of color, but they work great um, when you want to do smaller, smaller sections. Do, do, do. And let's see, okay. The dye just binds to the stroll and to super washings. Ooh, maybe I'll do the violet on a like um, untreated versus super wash kind of colorway. But it just binds so fast that sometimes even within yeah, these sections we see some white portions on the back which is, I don't know, I always find is like really pretty and cool. You can still see that there's blue in here but there are some whiter segments on the back, um, which there is less of on this worsted weight yarn. Yeah. That's just one difference. All right, I want to make sure, I hope I didn't start to, so another thing that can affect 
the depth of color that you see is how much the dye gets diluted across the yarn itself. So if we're trying to have a particular color cover a larger area, then it will be it'll be different. I wish I had a dip dot. Whoa. Ha! I wish I had a dip dyed yarn from the teal so that way I would be able to compare that that colorway with you because in the teal it almost went from like this this the teal color to then more of a um a blue from the blue green. But you see when I squeeze the wool, you see the, the color kind of squeeze out down there. Whereas when I squeeze when I squeeze this stroll, there's some blues that come through, but mostly we're seeing the paler colors. And I can do this because this color is the darkest. Just want to make sure the end gets some good coverage. It's less messy to use a brush or squeeze bottle. So what did I have? A total of one plus, so I had a total of three cups of water. It's not super extreme for the amount of yarn that I'm dyeing. Okay. Um, three, maybe I should have done a sixth color. Now I'm massaging this color through that section. And so you can see that we have a nice, and again, this is a very, very subtle, subtle, subtle gradient. Um, but the, the gradient on the, on just the 100% wool yarn is way uh, more consistent. Um, but it's different. I'll have to find a picture of the of the one I dip dyed, or maybe I'll have to dip dye one real quick so that way I can show you. Um, but I love you see the striping that we see on the tulian from where I added the dye and it just struck. Um, I think that that's so beautiful. And look, you see that the there's some segments underneath of whiter color. We don't really see that with this worsted weight wool yarn. But I'm now going down and just kind of pushing the color through. And I always put plastic wrap on my work surface uh, because oh, that's already really clear. That is funny. Um, It's not going to be a lot of moving this color around because that, my friends, is very clear. I am going to flip this over though. So you can see and I can add any residuals that I have to make them a little less um, A little less white. Not that I care a ton, um, but I think it will be nice. And I can also actually go over these paler sections with the very lightest color that I have left over. Um, it would just be nice if they were pale blue versus white. Eek. There. 
All right. I'm now gonna flip. Whoa, there's a lot of water in there. <laughs> flip this back over so we can see the stream of the gradient. But those are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yarns. I'm not sure that you guys can read my markers, but again, that we have our 100% stock solution over here. 50%, 25%, 12.5%, and then 6.25% down at the other end. It's now time to roll up, to roll up these yarns to prepare to microwave them to set the color. Although as we saw, the color is actually already pretty present in the uh, in the in the stroll yarn. Okay. I'm now going to microwave these yarns to set the color. Um, I like to, in my microwave, microwave in two minute increments on high for usually a total of four minutes um, until the yarn is hot to touch um, and then we'll let it cool. For this 200 gram jelly roll total four minutes in the microwave was perfectly acceptable. Um, I forget which experiment there was that I needed to up it to six minutes, but usually four minutes in my microwave works. Um, it's hot to touch. You can see it's nice and steamy. And now we're going to leave this to cool completely before we wash it. Now I like to leave it rolled up in the jelly roll to give their, a lot, the yarn a lot of time with the heat. Um, but after, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, if you get impatient, you can always unroll the jelly roll a bit to let it cool um, faster so then you can wash it. But I usually just leave it like this for a couple hours until it is room temperature. All right, let's unwrap our yarns. Do -do -do -do. Oh, look at that color. It is beautiful. I'm not wearing my gloves right now, but maybe I got a little blue on me. Okay, you can see that we're experiencing some bleeding. That shouldn't be too surprising um, given the intensity of the dye at one end of these yarns. Um, but this will probably require a number of rinses to get out any residual glue. I guess I shouldn't say not surprising because normally um, I don't have very much color come out um, with these types of methods. but. Okay, you see there's still some blue, but a lot less than there was. So sometimes when the yarns bleed a bit, I like to add a bunch of water and let them soak in there to give stuff a chance to dissolve. And I'm also switching to a clear dish soap. Um, mainly because I've heard that some of these might be, well, again, I haven't tested the pH yet, but Oh, there's still a fair amount of dye in here. Yeah, I switched to a clear soap so that way it wouldn't affect, mainly so it wouldn't affect the color of the rinse water um, when I'm trying to determine if things are bleeding. Now, if your yarn is bleeding too much for you and you don't want all the color to rinse out, you can add more, add vinegar, add more vinegar, let it soak and heat it up again. But I am really, really happy with these colors, even with the blue rinsing out. Um, I think that we are going to have some beautiful yarn. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to rinse these multiple times until the water runs clear. And then I will put them to the salad spinner again and then hang them up to dry. Here are the finished dried yarns. We have our worsted weight 100% wool yarn 
And our fingering weight, 75% super wash wool, 25% nylon sock yarn. In both of these cases, the colors, the hues are very similar, but we have a much more even gradient on the 100% wool yarn than we do on the super wash blend. Because as we saw, that the, the dye seemed to bind the yarn significantly faster on this blend. And this is something that we have observed in other dyeing videos as well. So just to flip this over so you can see our gradients. Now in this end of the sock yarn, you can kind of see how we've got some more blue-green sections and a little bit more of the blue sections. This is extremely subtle, but it's some of the way that the Wilton's teal food coloring breaks. And so if we were to just dip dye the 100% wool yarn into the teal, we would see the blue-green kind of break into more of this kind of blue that we sometimes see at the end of Wilton's Violet. And so this technique of using cereal dilutions to hand paint a tonal yarn, it's a great way to get a gradient with maintaining the, the I guess the hue that you want, but um, making you know the saturation of the color less as you go along versus allowing the color to break. Of course, if we were to do this with Wilton's Violet or Delphinium Blue, we would still see breaking within the different sections, but it would be a lot more subtle than if you were to dip, do a whole dip dye. Thank you so much, Carly Lanners, for sponsoring this video. I have been wanting to do hand painting with cereal dilutions of food coloring for a long time and your support mean I finally had the chance to do it and share it with all of you. In today's cereal dilution, I started off by dissolving one teaspoon of food coloring in one cup of water. And then in each subsequent dilution, I diluted the dye in half. So we went from 100% stock solution to 50%, 25%, 12.5%. But you don't have to do cereal dilutions by making things by diluting in half, you can do more extreme dilutions. It depends on how extreme you want your gradient to be. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching this dyeing video. If you haven't subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel yet, make sure you do so you can be notified when I release a new video. Thanks for watching!